but in the new covenant, when 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 we ourselves are are exiles, what, what does it look like uh, from sojourner to sojourner? What does neighbor love look like from exile to exile? Uh, whether for those who happen to live in the land of their birth, or for those who who are re- refugees and exiles in a, in a kind of double sense, uh, does does that thought make any sense? I'm hoping to invite some thoughts on that. Are you asking me, Ryan, or are you asking just generally for all this? Speakers? Anyone, but anyone really, but you're unmuted. So uh, <laughs> such is the nature of Zoom. Yeah, it, it's kind of intriguing. I, I, I'm not sure if I fully comprehend the depth of your question. And my guess is that this can be reflected in, in different layers and different textures as well. I am an immigrant. What that means, uh, just briefly, means that I came to the States having been born in a different country. Uh, So having been born and raised in Korea for about the first 10 years of my life, I came to the States as uh, as an immigrant family naturalized into our citizenship. Uh, Dr. Johnson mentioned earlier in our Q&A about the importance that Paul places on the notion that we are heavenly citizens. And, And it's not by chance that we recognize that for Paul, who can find his identity as a Roman in terms of his citizenship, a Jew in terms of his upbringing and ethnicity, uh, a a Greek in terms of his training and education and the city in which he found himself, identified with none of those. Uh, And and it's not by chance the one who was abused by the Jews, the one who was tried by the Romans, uh, the one who was abandoned by the Greeks is the one who's actually translating for us and teaching us what it means to live on this side of glory, as a pilgrim and a sojourner, not belonging anywhere. And I think one thing that I learned fairly quickly as a young man growing up in a new country was, though I love the country and I love the country that I left, I love the new country in which I find myself, I didn't really belong. Uh, I'm a bit of a misfit. We, We talked about earlier before, but certainly the concept of being a misfit is everywhere. Lots of people call me different things. Some people call me Korean American with a hyphen in between. Koreans call themselves a 1.5 Korean. What that means is a first generation is an older adult who came to the States. A second generation is someone who was born in the States. Someone like me, they call 1.5, who is culturally and linguistically adept but yet belonging to neither place. Now, people look at that and say, well, it's because you possess the positive of both, the first and second or the Korean or the American. I take that to mean simply, I don't belong anywhere. You're kind of stuck in between through the cracks. You're neither fully Korean nor fully American. You're neither fully first generation or fully second generation. Now, I I, I say that not as a self pity, Um, There was a time where that was self-pity, but I take that as the Lord's providence in placing me where I am, recognizing that this is certainly not my home. This is not because I don't love the states. It's not because I don't love the food, nor the culture, nor the language. I love all of that. To be honest, same thing with Korea and the culture and the food that's there. But like someone who's a sojourner, you identify and you receive the blessings of all these things, but you're not there permanently. You have a passport in your pocket that tells you your rights and privileges are elsewhere. And therefore you live with the joy uh, as well as sometimes the pain of being someone who is a sojourner in one place as a misfit and that not fitting in and being weird, uh, those things are not necessarily neg- negative things for us. But those things remind us that we belong somewhere else. Always a daily reminder that we are just in a stop in a subway, if we know subways, but that we have a home and the final destination to which we must head. And I realize that your your question is much more deeper than that, uh, I recognize. But I do wonder about that, that sometimes we are over-identified with our time, with our place, with our culture with the preferences that we have, when really the rights and privileges that we hold dearer and dearest is elsewhere. Can I ask you, are you more Korean or American? Yes, 
that's the best way of saying it. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to say because I think who I am is really a, an amalgamation of mm-hmm. really both. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I, and at some point in my life that was really difficult to be honest. Mm-hmm. And even as I was trying to answer that question, I'm a Korean. Am I American? What does it mean to be a hyphenated person? Mm-hmm. Korean hyphen and it was American. It was a big deal growing up as a teenager. I it was. It was actually quite challenging in many ways. Mm-hmm. I mean, looking back as a Korean American, not feeling like I belonged in either community mm-hmm. uh, because I, I didn't live in Korea anymore, so I wasn't really Korean. And even though I was American, spoke the language, went to its schools, I always felt like an outsider, mm-hmm. marginalized uh, because of the way I look. Mm-hmm. And went through a period of even even what some would call a self hatred, mm-hmm. looking at the mirror and just praying and being angry at God for making me the way I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now, all that experience, I think, has really helped shape me in understanding my own identity. First and foremost, as a Christian, that because of my my union with Christ and God as my Father, uh, it's really helped me grasp the importance of my my citizenship in heaven, and not so much in the country of Korea or the country of America. Feeling like an exile in both those places. That's right. And I think that could actually be a good thing, and, I, and I've shared this with others, that... Um, Feeling like a pilgrim could actually be a good thing because it reminds me of, of that, the, the struggles and the trials that we have in this life are really temporary in mm-hmm. that God does everything for a purpose. He's sovereign and he's good. That everything we go through is, is to help us become more like Christ. And- Thank you.